we're outside Triple House Hotel. We're in Terman Fracken and uh, Ismaili. And there's, I was here yesterday, and I understand that 42 men, uh, single men, are here in the Triple House in Terman Fracken. Due to accommodation crisis in, uh, in Ireland, the immigration office is going to accommodate more people in here. Right. So basically, the people over here are trying their best to help us. Yes. But uh, still, uh, accommodating too many people in, in I think a place like this. I think your security guy said there's 42. I think he said there was there's people from Georgia. Yeah, from Georgia, from Algeria, Afghanistan, and Egypt. Uh, we are people from different countries. Right. And about nine people from Afghanistan are uh, currently uh, living in here. Okay. Yeah. And you, you, the guys I met yesterday, you speak good English. Yeah. Uh, the good education, uh, well educated. No, I'm not educated. It's in the social media in time, so yeah, English you know. is very common these days. Okay. You yeah. You came last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Where? How long were you in Ireland for? About uh, 42, 42 days. Right. I mean, right. And then you were sent here. They all arrived on Wednesday, was it? Uh, we arrived here on Wednesday at the first, but then we told the accommodation team, the I-Pass team, yes. that uh, we are too many and we cannot live here. Right. Because we uh, don't have privacy, we don't have the proper uh, living standard. There's four in a room, you were saying? Uh, currently, we're six in a room. Six in a room? Yeah. Okay. And the room is uh, uh, for a total of eight people. Right. So, it's a big problem. I think it can be made better. Okay. Yeah. And you... So Afghanistan is is a long way away. I don't. I know you train is three thousand miles away. I, I presume you, Afghanistan is I don't know five thousand miles away. Or, and so how how did you come to Ireland? Well, that's a that's a big story. Right. We had to face many problems uh, to flee here Sorry. and Sorry. Uh, seek refuge in this country, so we can make a better life. And, yes. Uh, we were saying yesterday that uh, we came in, obviously, from the East Asia, Turkey, Bulgaria, France, England, Ireland. Well, that is the route everybody come here. Right. Yeah. right. And yes. why, and that's across land, mostly, obviously. Sorry. Hello. Hi, God. Hey, well, good. Yes. Long time, Lucy. Yes. No, her daughter used to do Irish dance with my daughter. Uh, Ireland's a small country, you'll find that out very right soon. Uh, yeah, so they mainly came from um, Asia, Turkey, India, Bulgaria, towards Northern Europe, France, and then over to England, and then to Ireland. Afghanistan is a country which is not even recognized by, by a single nation in the world, so there is no other way we can come here. How do you find uh, the situation? Uh, well, since the situation that we have gone through was wo much worse than this, Yes. Uh, it's still better, but uh, after going uh, through so much, we I think we need a little bit mo uh, more. More, uh, we need to be facilitated, facilitated a little bit more as we have gone through so much. And do you do you find there was a difference in culture about cooking and stuff like that? Ah, uh, food and uh, yeah, food and food is the main problem. They are helping us a lot. They are uh, asking us about each and everything. But since there is a diff difference in culture and religion. So we demand halal food and all that. So they are trying to help us, but since there is a difference so in culture, they, they can. They eat. don't provide halal food here. Yeah, they provide, but all mixed up. Uh, the kitchen, everything is cooked together. Still, it's not like. Uh, it's not really acceptable to Muslim. Yeah, that's not really acceptable. Right. Uh, it would be much better if we could cook our own food and ha or had an halal, a Muslim chef. But that would be much better if we could uh, cook our own food and uh, that, because well, we know what, what do you think of the idea that when you go to there's, sorry, there's a phrase in english uh, when in rome do as the romans do when you go to another culture you have to that's accept a good their culture question. that's a good question we have, have adopted the culture our dressing our language yes. and everything is there yes. but since religion is uh, one of the basic uh, uh, thing of our life religion cannot be adopted so right. you have to do deal with that and uh, the f everything is we can adopt but religion is the basic thing and most of the people in the world seek refuge due, due to religion or due to religious uh, problems so that is the only thing that we keep 
in, in its own, okay. own original shape. So about halal and all the culture of Islam yeah, yeah, must yeah. be maintained. Ah, otherwise everything is good. People are hospitable. We talk with each other. We gossip with each other. Yes. But since religion, we keep it like that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Herman Kelly. I'm here today at the Triple House Restaurant in Termenfraken in County Louth. I spoke to the security man. I spoke to four Afghani uh, uh, asylum seekers. And they tell me that there's 42 asylum seekers here within uh, the grounds here. They came on Wednesday. Uh, there's 12 from Georgia. The Afghanis told me that they came here the whole way from the four Afghanis here. They came from Afghanistan via Turkey into Bulgaria, came into the, into the EU. The first country they touched was Bulgaria. They didn't apply for asylum there. They moved on land through the whole of Europe into France, into England, and then over to Ireland. Uh, it basically calls into question the, the use of the Dublin Convention in Ireland, where uh, they obviously didn't apply in the first safe country. Uh, they came and they said that uh, the guy, sadly the sound didn't work, that uh, the guy said that they had heard that Ireland was a very safe place. It was a very uh, generous and, and, and safe place for asylum seekers to come. A lot of the rest of Europe was full, it was difficult, and that Ireland, uh, there was room there. And that uh, so they came to Ireland, the whole way across Europe, I suppose the Middle East, and then uh, Europe to come to Ireland. Why? Because they heard, in biblical terms, maybe that Ireland is the asylum seeker land of milk and honey. Now, one over one quarter of all hotel rooms in Ireland are currently taken up by asylum seekers. I believe this is madness. One, there's a huge economic cost involved, which is footed by the taxpayer, at a time when there's 11,000 uh, Irish homeless people. Uh, and secondly, why are we destroying the Irish tourism sector? Uh, we are, the taxpayer is paying for the put up in hotels, people, I go, uh, people from across the world, anybody who comes to Ireland and says the word asylum can get put up in a hotel at taxpayers' expense. We're destroying a productive sector of our economy and our culture. It's, it's a money earner for the country. We are halting that. And then on the flip side, we're then making the tax, the government is making the taxpayer fund for hotel rooms for foreigners, anybody who arrives here. It's madness. And thirdly, there's, there's the issue of security that we know from our experience in Sweden, Italy, Germany, France, etc., that uh, wherever, wherever there's a large influx of young males into a country, there's a rise in crime and sexual assault. That's happened all across Europe, and we shouldn't be naive or dishonest and claim that it, it will not happen here and that it has already begun to happen here. Because we can see over the last five years, there has been an increase in sexual assault. The only thing is that what are we going to do about it? Or what are we going to force the government to do about it? Because it can't go on. I met a woman in Sweden, and they were in the Sweden Democrats. The reason that, that they joined was because they were aware of the great danger posed in their area where similar centers had appeared, where young males without any woman and basically it led to a rash and sexual assault. So here we are. I know that is it the West Court of Drahara is now full of asylum seekers. Um, I was up in Dano Road there in the south of Drahara there during the week and there are a large number of asylum seekers going in there and here I am. So these people arrived on Wednesday. It's now St. Stephen's Day. These people came on Wednesday. 42 men uh, they're being put up. They're already complaining. The Afghani was complaining about the, the food wasn't halal. They're not happy with the food. They're not eating the, the meat. And uh, so they've already complained about the, the type of food that they're being given. I think it's a bit of a cheek, isn't it, that you come to Ireland, you've come the whole way across Asia and Europe to come here and you want to complain. And do we owe you something? Do we owe you a hotel, a free bed and breakfast. Are we idiots? Seems that we are. So I if you're unhappy about the situation, I would ask you to make your voice heard to the TDs, write to them, ring them up, tell them you're 
unhappy about the lack of control of immigration into our country. And it's not just asylum seekers, it is also economic migrants. From January to October this year, there were 200,000 PPS numbers given out. Only one quarter of those were given out to uh, Irish people or people born in Ireland. And that uh, the vast majority of people coming into Ireland are economic migrants here through EU open borders. And the only way we can, if like me, you believe that Irish people are good enough to make our own laws, good enough to control our own budgets and control our own borders, we have to be an independent, sovereign state and not no longer a member of the political union in which laws made in Brussels can be imposed upon us in Ireland. And I believe that is completely against everything the men and women of 1916 fought for a, uh, a century ago and that we should once more seek to be an independent, sovereign Ireland and that the government should work for the benefit of Irish people and we cannot feed, house and look after the world and its mother. We have to be a bit more sensible and act like a normal, mature democracy rather than a patsy for the rest of the world and those in Brussels. So my name is Herman Kelly. I'm president of the Irish Freedom Party. Thanks for listening. I'd ask you to share this with your friends. If you can, donate to the party and join up the party and help us to build a better Ireland for ourselves and our children. Gora Margotza, Slanis Bannock.